Welcome back. What more can I say? So you, so you be the judge, MSMS. Uh, so in case you don't know it, I guess you've seen the answer. And there's a new word that has also been introduced by the NBS called nano. Nano enterprises, those are companies that employ like one to two uh, people. That was introduced at the last survey with uh, Smeda. All right, let's move ahead. Uh, the program, joining me right now is Isiri Agbe with uh, the PwC partner and the family business leader. Hello, Isiri. Welcome to the program. Hi, Nancy. Thank you for having me. Hi, and, and good to have you on the show. We're looking at um, strategies for building family wealth. Uh, and let me start by saying, uh, they say money can't buy you happiness, isn't it? But money can buy you comfort and the good things of life and give, give you options. So I'd I'll, I'll rather be in a vacation home in Bali or in the Bahamas, not happy, than being in a hut somewhere I don't have food to eat, not happy. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So let, let me start by asking, what does generational wealth mean or family wealth? What does it mean? Uh, I think in simple terms, and what people generally understand it to mean is just passing on wealth from one generation to the next, um, starting with the founding generation who probably created that wealth. Um, but what some of the misconceptions you then have is whether that wealth needs to be passed on within the same asset type or structure, legal structure, or even business name. So um, several and decades ago or centuries ago, because this is a science, family business, mm. right? Um, centuries ago, the success of family businesses were dictated by whether or not the family name continued. But I think over time that has um, transcended to then mean whether the wealth itself is transformed within the same family. So you could have that you started off or founded the business doing agriculture or manufacturing, and somewhere along the line, a next generation member decides that, oh, I'd like to invest in digital assets now because cryptocurrency is the in thing, you know, and then as long as that wealth is protected and not lost, then you can allude to some generational wealth being transferred. Okay, uh, you've brought up the issue of crypto, and I'll come back to it later in terms of technology, you know, uh, especially this time. I hope there'll be time for that. But my next question to you is a bit personal. You know, since we're talking about family wealth and generational uh, wealth, did you receive money advice from your parents, from exa for example, or how much of it did you receive? Because if we're talking about family wealth, it really starts from from the home. It really starts from there, isn't it? How much money advice did you receive from your family? And I also do know that even before you started working at PwC, before you got that job offer, you were doing some things. Can you please share? I think you were selling stuff on the street or something. <laughs> That's you. Uh, you want me to share all those my rugged moves that I was making then. <laughs> but yes, I did get advice from my parents at the time. Um, coming from school and my dad and my mom were very simple people. My mom was a teacher. My dad fortunately was an accountant working mm -hmm. with big organizations and he was also a trainer. So he was training people as well. And I think I'm following in his path mm -hmm. too. So one of the key things I learned from him was really around financial literacy and just the basics in accounts. I was a science student. I aced all my you know, exams and everything. I did science wonderfully well. But at the time I left school, there really was no job. And some of the questions that I then started to ask myself is how could I then sustain myself, you know, and not really um, rely on my parents. And what I sought to do at the time was basically my passion, which was around baking. And I would bake and then sell on the street. And fortunately for me, I'll call their name out because I absolutely love their mutual fund. Some top guy in mutual fund stopped by me and he's like, oh, I'll buy all your cakes and takes me to their office. And they bought all the, uh, my cakes. And since then, you know, I just continued. And at the same time, I was working on a very 
underpaid, um, I, I would say, employment position I had with my mom's school. So I was paid 8,000 Naira, and I was actually teaching primary school five, teaching them math and all those very tough subjects. Um, but I did it with glee and joy, you know. And following from then, I landed with the PwC job. So I pretty much was prepped with my dad as well, just teaching me the basics on accounting, debit and credit, which I cried about because I thought there was no hypothesis to what a debit and credit transaction was coming from science. But I mean, that was really very helpful to get me started and embracing that um, job in PwC. You know what, Siri, sometimes it's good to really personalize some of these things that we talk about and some of those things that you teach so that people can actually relate and let it not be so theoretical. Um, I see that we both share a lot of things in common. You're talking right now. I know that even when I was growing up, we had piggy banks in my house. Then we could find um, the coins. They are nowhere to be found now. And we dropped those coins. And it was always a very huge satisfaction on our part as let's open it and see how much I is in it. Uh, I know you, you, you you said you said you said today you study microbiology i study parasitology so i don't even know what i'm doing here i should be part of those chasing covid <laughs> but, but we're but we're here the other thing that also resonated with me which you talked about was you you started teaching and you were being paid eight thousand naira a siri after secondary school i was a teacher i started teaching too i taught in a primary school and i was uh, teaching nursery two students at a time and i was being paid one thousand five hundred naira so, <laughs> you know, so I, I just needed to bring in that to, to tell our viewers that it's not really about, you've got to start somewhere, isn't it? There should be a foundation. That was why mm -hmm. I asked you earlier in terms of the kind of money advice or the kind of money lessons you got, even if not from home, but along uh, uh, the, the, the way. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say about that before we move forward? Okay, to share some of the advice I got, right? Yes. Do you have any other things to, to say? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think one of the key things, because I, I would, if I was going to categorize my dad, I probably would put him in the safe interest of the one that doesn't like to take any risk. Oh. And he just wants to be sure that his obligations are fully met when due. So my dad would save every single time for the next holiday, or the next um, school fees that was coming up, he would save two years in advance. And he'll keep that. Unfortunately, I don't have that type of discipline as my dad. I'm somewhere midway, uh, but I try to compensate that by saying perhaps I need to look out for other asset types that I can invest in and not just rely on um, employment. Um, but then that also has its ups and its downs. You know, it doesn't come without risk. So I guess it's really identifying what level of risk you can accommodate. You don't want to make money and then have a high blood pressure just making the money and then use that money to um, save yourself or even die in the midst of doing so. So, but one of the critical things would be depending on what your risk profile might be, it might just be that you want to start saving first. And then the next um, line you could then go to would be investing in safe and secure type assets. And this would range from short-term um, securities, fixed income um, securities like treasury bills or even federal government bonds because they have strong backing of the sovereign. And so you don't expect to go wrong there. Saving as well obviously will give you some points, but not so much. 